The search for a Sonic the Hedgehog prototype was a long one. For over 20 years people had longed to get their hands on a fabled pre-release build. Fortunately for Sonic fans, on the 1st of January 2021, a build finally surfaced online, thanks to Hidden Palace. Said to have originated from a UK magazine, this beta build has many interesting differences from the final game, including backgrounds, badniks, and objects. Today I'd like to take a quick look at some of the biggest differences present in this early version of the game. To start with, only four levels are playable without the aid of the level select. Green Hill Zone, Marble Zone, Sparkling Zone, and Starlight Zone. Labyrinth and Scrap Brain are present here too, but only accessible with level select. This isn't an exhaustive list of differences by any means, just some of what I consider to be the most significant. So, let's take a look at what are, in my opinion, some of the more interesting things discovered in this prototype. Ok, so the first difference we may notice when booting the game is that the game is missing the iconic SEGA chant that we've all come to know and love. SEGA! Instead, this prototype uses the standard SEGA logo introduction. It's also missing the Sonic Team Presents screen. Interestingly, when implementing this screen, they accidentally introduced a bug that would cause the press start button text to not show up on the title screen. But, it is present and working here in this prototype. Sonic's jump is 6 pixels lower when at its highest point. It's not a huge difference, but it does change the game's feel somewhat. If I pause here, you should hopefully be able to see what I mean. There are no checkpoints implemented into the game. If you die, you have to start over from the beginning of the zone. This can be quite annoying as, in my opinion, the game is much harder here. Even if you're invincible, you will take damage on spikes. Ouch. In this version of the game, you receive an extra life when you collect 50 and 100 rings, as opposed to the 100 and 200 in the final. Also, the game won't remember if you have previously gained extra lives through collecting rings, unlike the final. So you can get 100 rings to collect 2 lives, lose your rings, and then do it again to stack up more lives. This means you're going to end up with a lot more lives than you do in the final. This may have been changed when they implemented the continue feature, which is absent here. When jumping into the game, we may notice that if we look at the heads up to Oh great, what's this motor bug doing so close to spawn? I'm glad they changed that in the final. Anyway, as I was saying, if we look at the heads-up display, we notice that in this build the rings counter reads as ring, as we saw in many pre-release screenshots. It's a small change, but it's one that always stuck with me. You'd be forgiven for not noticing this, but also have noticed how the ring counter will not flash when you have no rings. Also, you won't actually time out at 10 minutes. When the timer reaches 10 minutes, it will loop back to 9. This was most likely used for testing, but interesting to note nonetheless. Also shown in early screenshots is Sonic's scrapped victory pose, where when jumping at the end of the level, Sonic will throw his fist up in triumphant victory. Well, thanks to this prototype, we can finally see it in action. In the final game, Sonic will instead gain some bonus points when jumping at the end of the zone. Being the flagship level of the game, Green Hill is perhaps unsurprisingly the most complete. It's the only level with a boss battle. Some things regarding this. Eggman does not yet have his laughing animation that plays when he enters the arena, or when Sonic takes damage. The light underneath the Eggmobile doesn't flash yet. And once defeated, he will fly away much faster, and his music will keep playing. This rolling ball was shown in early screenshots of the game and has perplexed players for years. What was its purpose? What was it for? Well, now we know that it's essentially just, as you may expect, an object or hazard that will roll down the hill. Sonic can jump on top of it or be pushed by it. It has some dodgy collision detection that will sometimes push Sonic through the floor to his death. And sometimes it will even fly off in weird gravity-defying ways. Perhaps this is why it was cut. The rolling ball wouldn't go totally unused though, as it would be repurposed into Eggman's weapon in the first boss battle, as we can see here. 
One of my absolute favourite things in this prototype are the flying UFOs found in Marble Zone. I wondered about these things for years after seeing them in early screenshots. What are they? Are they aliens? Are they one of Robotnik's creations? Why are they there? Anyway, after all these years we can now finally see them in action. Of course, they don't do anything and they're just part of the background graphics, but I just love how mysterious they are. I also like how there are some rings and item monitors on top of pillars, similar to the trees in Green Hill. For some reason, these were removed. You may also notice that the Caterkiller Badnik that usually populates this level is absent. Instead we have the Spikes Badnik, usually seen in Springyard Zone. There is no sign of the Caterkiller Badnik in this build. I also want to mention Splats the Bunny, a completely scrapped Badnik that appeared in a lot of promotional material for the game. Thankfully they are fully working here and are able to be spawned into Marble Zone with the debug code. It's really cool to see this missing Badnik in action after all these years. Sonic must jump on these platforms to lower them. It was changed to a more convenient switch in the final game. While we're here at Marble Zone, I thought I'd mention these horizontal spike crushers. They were replaced with the much more forgiving moving blocks in the final. The Labyrinth Zone, only accessible through level select, uses a completely different backdrop to the level than what we see in the final as we can see here. I actually really like the look of this. It reminds me a bit of Hidden Palace Zone from Sonic 2. The final background art more closely resembles the tiles used in the level itself. One of the things I find most intriguing about this level are these sections here. These brick sections were likely used as underwater air pockets where Sonic could catch his breath. These areas exist in the final game, but are submerged and look a bit different, and they instead contain some air bubbles. There's no water in the game yet, but it's interesting to see that they were experimenting with different ideas. There are these sprites found in the code of the game. I wonder if they were linked to this early scrapped idea. This early version of Springyard Zone, called Sparkling Zone, has a totally different aesthetic. The background graphics here show a city with lots of bright neon lights. It looks really busy if I'm honest. It would be completely redesigned and toned down for the final, as we can see here. I think the final version is an improvement, but what do you think? Still, it's really cool to see this level during this early stage of development. Here's a closer look at the background graphics. The art used in Starlight Zone is slightly different to the final. For example, there exist these lights on top of the loop-de-loops, and there's a more construction site feel to it. The level has no badniks placed in any of the acts, and there are bottomless pits everywhere, further showing just how unfinished it is. At the end of Act 1, we see the signpost is embedded into the ground, possibly hinting that a change in the level design had recently taken place. Only Act 1 is accessible on normal play, and once completed you'll be taken back to the title screen. At this point in the game's development, Scrap Brain was called Clockwork Zone. The title card for this level has a missing graphic for the W, so it's displayed as Clockwork Zone. The level can only be reached with level select and it has no objects placed in it. There's still lots of work that needs to be done. There are diagonal conveyor belts, but they don't work. There's also a smaller variation of the rotating discs that Sonic spins on. Both would end up being scrapped before the final release. The special stage exists here, but it only has a very basic design. It is very unfinished. There is a placeholder green block instead of a Chaos Emerald, and the whole stage is barely populated. Here's a zoomed out look at the whole map. It's worth mentioning that the animated background is present and working here. This prototype helps us answer some long-running Sonic mysteries, as well as being an important piece of gaming history. We may never see an earlier version of Sonic in the wild, 
but I'm forever grateful that we finally got to see this snapshot of the game during its development. As I said before, this is by no means a full list of every difference in the game. I highly recommend downloading it and seeing what other changes you might find. Have you played this prototype? What's your favourite piece of scrapped content? Were you even aware of its existence? If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out of here!